Bring in former Amazon Studios head of strategy Matthew Ball, along with the uh, Cowan's Doug Kreutz, has a market perform rating on Disney. Guys, appreciate the help today. Doug, um, to Julia's point, I mean, it wasn't that long ago people were really tossing around ideas about the asset mix really changing. We didn't get it, but has Iger built in enough optionality for that still? Well, obviously, you know, they could still do anything. They were pretty clear last night they're not looking to get rid of ESPN, which is the asset that is most often mentioned when people are talking about divesting assets. They, they said they looked at it during the, the JPEG regime and decided it wasn't a good idea. Um, you know, I think right now, even if they wanted to sell something, the question would be, could they find someone to buy it? Uh, desire for these assets right now is not super high. A lot of the potential buyers are also balance sheet constrained. So, you know, just because they want to do something doesn't mean that they could do it. Uh, indeed. Uh, Matthew, I'm, I'm reading a bunch of uh, Wall Street desk notes. Here's one from Bernstein. The streaming wars are over and Netflix has won. Strongest balance sheet, uh, content budgets being slashed. Iger clearly wants higher quality subs, and they argue that's going to cost him more in acquisition costs. I mean, how much white space is there between Netflix and everybody else? Well, I think when you take a look at Netflix versus Disney, we're seeing roughly 40 or 60 percent more subscribers and 3x the ARPU. Even though the top line number of subscribers held by the Walt Disney Company, when you sum up ESPN plus Disney plus Hotstar and Hulu seems comparable, the gap certainly on a revenue basis and now on a cash basis just for streaming is quite considerable. But that does raise the question, if that's Disney in number two, how far is the rest of the pack? And I think that's why Netflix is feeling good today. Hey, Doug, good morning. It's Sierra. Activist investors, they are on the hunt in this market environment. Pelts has declared victory, but I wonder if it's possible that Disney has opened itself up to other activists who maybe think that ESPN should be spun off or have strong opinions on the dividend and Hulu. I mean, all you have to do is look at Salesforce, which is under pressure by, what, five activist investors. Is this the end of this story here? Or do you think that someone else could swoop in? Uh... I think if Nelson Peltz hadn't gotten involved in the first place, what Disney announced yesterday would have been just about exactly the same. I don't, you know, maybe they wouldn't have announced a dividend reinstatement. I don't know. But, uh, you know, they, they were already in process of looking at cutting costs even before Bob Iger came back. They had said that a billion of the five and a half billion was already built into the plan that they laid out for investors on Chapex last call. So, you know, he can declare victory, but... I don't know that Disney did anything different just because he was involved. Right. Um, and Matthew, what do you think? Were you convinced by his comments on finding a successor? Are you optimistic that he's going to be able to do so in two years? I think that's going to be quite the challenge. But certainly at this point, it's clear that, as he said earlier today to CNBC, everything's on the table. That includes dividends, cost savings, simultaneously putting more control in the hands of creative while not looking to divest ESPN making it a separately distinguished entity makes it very clear exactly what that business looks like and what it might get in the market as the market turns around. Lastly, identifying that general entertainment content is less of a priority going forward while announcing many new sequels. The reason why I say this is just he's making very clear to anyone who might try to take an activist stake what the entire landscape of the company looks mm. like and how it might evolve going forward. That seems likely to buy him some time, even as he reconfigures his own succession. 